talk a little bit about jazz articulation. Articulation could be thought of as a subset of the entire picture of articulation on the trumpet. Articulation is just another way of saying how we uh, identify the beginnings and endings of the notes with the help of our tongue. So, of course, uh, working on jazz articulation is a subset of working on articulation uh, in all registers at all dynamic levels. I think, generally speaking, um, some of the articulations that we use specific to the jazz idiom are things that we wouldn't necessarily do in the so-called classical world. And vice versa, uh, there's certain things in the classical world that we wouldn't uh, necessarily want to do in the jazz world because they wouldn't sound right. So, of course, articulation is guided by sound, so the first thing we want to do is find people who articulate well, whether that be Clifford Brown or Kenny Dorham or Lee Morgan, and listen to those recordings. Studying a transcription, for example, of Freddie Hubbard, uh, you want to try to notate as precisely as you can where he's placing his tongue and where he's not placing his tongue. said when working on uh, articulation and how to uh, play through charts, jazz charts, show charts, anything in the sort of jazz realm, uh, there are some specifics. And I suppose we can call those specifics rules, but they're not hard and fast rules. They're guiding principles. Those guiding principles, those rules can be altered or adapt based on specific situations. And, um, through my educational process with various teachers who, you know, prior to my generation played in the bands of Woody Herman, Stan Kenton, Buddy Rich, etc., uh, the way that was transmitted to me. Uh, was through a very specific way of marking parts. So the guiding principles to jazz articulation are not something that I've invented, they're just something that I'm passing along to you. And generally, for the purpose of our discussion here, uh, the type of articulation that I'm talking about pertains to basically swing time or any of the variants of swing time. Degree, those articulation principles apply to, let's say, Latin music, uh, funk, show music, etc. Get to the specifics of what I find myself saying over and over again to students in classes or in lessons. Uh, let's cover one small side item. The idea that in a Latin tune or a straight eighth note tune, as you might call it, um, that eighth notes are, are even. say that I don't think eighth notes are absolutely even, uh, but they're even within the context of that particular idiom. Say that eighth notes in a Latin tune or a bossa nova, something like that, would be relatively straight 
in relation to say a 1930s swing chart which is going to be a heavy triplet feel. Of course there's people that are experts in playing all kinds of different styles and the differences between let's say 1940 swing and 1930s swing and I think consulting with somebody who's a real expert with a very specific idiomatic question that you have would be a great idea. What I'm talking about here is just some general principles to get a student headed from the world of concert band playing and symphonic playing into the world of jazz. Say what we're talking about here is to get a person that's not accustomed to playing much in the jazz idiom to a place where they can begin to sound more correct within the jazz idiom in the context of, let's say, a, a big band or a jazz combo. First guiding principle is that we don't want to tongue every single note, and that's one very common mistake. Along with that, the alternative is not that we slur every single note. In general, what we're looking for is a tongue slur pattern that we would call maybe something like slur two, slur two in a group of four notes, except that's offset by one eighth note. include an example here of just a simple scale that shows that articulation marked in. A couple of things to keep in mind when trying to apply this particular articulation pattern to passages, musical passages, would be um, the common mistake that the note we're slurring into then becomes short we want that note to be long. I think it's safe to say that we want most of our notes to be legato and long, except for those notes that are short. Begs the question, which notes are short? Those would be notes at the end of a phrase, notes that stand alone, generally speaking, uh, quarter notes that are off the beat, eighth notes uh, at the end of a phrase, um, quarter notes that are on probably count two and four, more likely than counts one and three. And triplets present an unusual uh, exception to this tongue slur, tongue slur pattern. Fairly simple ways to cope with a triplet, let's say an eighth note triplet in the context of a series of other eighth notes. One would be to include an eighth note prior to the triplet, slur through the entire triplet, and one eighth note passed. So you wind up with basically a slur five pattern. Another option which often helps with technical difficulties on the trumpet is to slur an eighth note prior to the triplet into the first two notes of the triplet, tongue the last eighth note into what follows.
I emphasize that listening is extremely important and also singing along with recordings, listening to good singers. Um, but basically what we're trying to do is imitate the human voice in some way. This helps you get started in the right direction and of course always consulting with a teacher and having them listen closely to what you're doing or what you're not doing and make some recommendations would be a really good way to keep you moving on the right direction.